Hey everybody, this is Scott, uh, taking a break from photography to bring you uh, one of my game videos. I play a lot of games as my relaxation. I don't watch TV. This is kind of what I do to cool down uh, and relax. So uh, today I'm playing Elite Dangerous, but I want to show a little bit different aspect than a lot of the other videos that I see out there uh, for this great game. This, uh, for all of you who don't know, this is a space combat simulator uh, that is uh, was a Kickstarter, and it's uh, grown by leaps and bounds. It just had its official release uh, a week, like a week ago. Uh, but I wanted to show a little bit different aspect than most people show, and that is the trading of rares and using two tools uh, that uh, are not part of the game, but are add-ins made by the user base, and that is the BPC tool uh, by Slopey and the Elite OCR tool. So what these do are allow people to uh, help trade uh, know what the market prices are and the systems in which they're going so they can get the most bang for the buck when they arrive. Uh, but uh, the devs have made it uh, pretty much impossible for people to be able to get information from the markets in the stations where they're landing. Uh, so someone made a tool that allows you to screen scrape the application uh, using a Python script, uh, which you then use to, uh, to read basically the market prices, create uh, uh, an index file, which is then read by the Slopey tool. So I'll show you each one of these in turn, but I also want to talk about rare trading because this is a great way and, and, and the way that I use to pretty much kickstart the game off for myself. So uh, rare trading are uh, certain items that are available in the game at, at specific stations and it's not like a known or broadcast thing. Uh, when you find a station with a rare, the goal is to get that rare as far from the station where it originates as possible, usually 130 to 160 light years. Now I'm going to show you some tools that I use that I think are, are really uh, helpful to do this. So first one is this website here, elite trading tool uh, .co .uk. Uh, So this tool um, is really slick. So it's got some nice uh, trading calculators and finds it's a little bit in its infancy there compared to other tools, but its it rare uh, database is, is very good. Uh, so basically you put in the location of where you are right now. We are in Anina, so we'll put in uh, Anina and show the table. So this shows you that uh, any not coffee is available in this station at the Liberty Orbital uh, station, and it's about 1,790 uh, per serving. Now, uh, the thing about this is that the uh, again, it's 1,790 here, but if we can get a great distance from the station, that's you know, that's where we'll show you what this is worth and why. I think it's a great move initially for players that might be starting in the stock ship, don't have any money to upgrade any weapons. Dogfighting is going to be a little difficult. Uh, and you're going to die quite often where if you had, say, a good 50 or 60 or maybe even 100,000 credits boost, you could add some nice items to your Sidewinder and then actually start winning some of those dogfights, uh, even against the NPCs a little more efficiently without taking so much damage. So by doing, a, even with the limited cargo hold of the Sidewinder, you do one of these runs. Not only do you get some exploration credit, which we'll talk about as well, uh, but you can get a great amount of money from the rare trading. Uh, so, so this shows that in any now we can pick up this this coffee. Now we do want to get um, 160 light years away if possible. So we just look down the list, and I do just I just look down here and see what's about 160 light years away. Look at that, Iranin is 154. Well, if you're starting in Iranin, pick up the whiskey and take it out to something 160 light years away. Uh, T is 153 light years away. Um, here's another T that's 152. So what we could do is kind of plan a round trip where we pick up something in, say, Iran and take it all the way out to uh, Fujin or, I mean, sorry, um, Anina or any other place that's 160 light years away, pick up whatever they have and turn around. Now, there are pockets of these as well. A really good example would be Lave. So, again, where many of us started back in Alpha Beta type times here, uh, Lave has a ton of rares all kind of in a pocket. So, Lave has Lavian Brandy. But 40 light years away in Diso, there's corn. And not even 40 light years away is Levine Evil Juice. Now there are two, um, I should say, uh, there are two rares in the George Lucas station in Lesti. Uh, there's Azure Milk, Blue Milk, a little nod to the original uh, scene in Star Wars, uh, where he's with his Aunt Fru uh, on Tatooine, and they're pouring Blue Milk, so there's your Azure Milk. And then uh, Evil Juice, then there's Leathery Eggs, not even six light years from there, uh, and, they and the Ridley Scott Station, which is a nice tip of the hat to the Alien movie. And then not even ten light years from there, and I'm not even going to say that, uh, there's some Brew. So, within ten light years of Lave, you've got six different rares that are available including Lave itself. 
So that will more than fill your, your stock. Now note that uh, there's been a recent change uh, that allows, uh, and I, I don't agree with the change by the way, but it basically allows a commander to only pick up their allotment in a station. So if, uh, th if one commander goes and takes all the supply and it's resupplied slowly, well, that's market supply and demand, where it's kind of been dumbed down now where there's always some available for every commander. Um, I, I don't agree with that. That's why I like some of these stations that are very far. Uh, like this one is, is over half, well, five, 500,000 light seconds from where you jump into the system. It's going to take you 25 minutes to get there in, uh, in Super Cruise. Well, that means that not a lot of people are going to be heading there. So for 12,000 credits, this puzzle box is probably going to be worth a, a ton when you get it to the other side. But as it is now, you can only purchase one, maybe two. Uh, sometimes if I'm not going to be online for a couple days, I'll log in uh, maybe twice in a day and see if more stock is available for me as a commander and put it in my hold. I think that that's even uh, nerfed down to a point where you can only carry so much of that specific rare and then no, uh, no more will be available to you, but I, I don't have proof of that. But anyway, so you get the rare table here. This is a, this is a great tool, again, to use. Okay, so let's talk about where I am now and what I did. So I flew from far away to get to any as I am now. So I just now arrive. So I thought I would uh, start this video and kind of explain the process of using these different tools. So the first thing I need to do is repair. I don't know what I did there to incur one damage, but all right. Uh, so let's talk about, so my flight here, everyone has the basic uh, flight discovery computer in, installed in their computer. So during these trips, you're going to find that you earn a lot just by walking, just by flying into the system, holding down your discovery scanner, firing it. You have to bind it to a um, to a f uh, fire group. And I just have it set to uh, something other than my regular hard points, and I fire it. So, and I don't, I don't try and discover the planets. I mean, if I would sit and uh, s you know, uh, target them. I could probably get a lot more money for this, but my goal is to get to this system as soon as possible. Because if I'm carrying a bunch of goods that are very rare and worth a ton of money, I don't want to goof around for another 200 or 400. I don't even know what the amount of credit is per planet. Not worth it to me. I just want to get this stuff cashed in. So look at that. We made a ton of cash just by using our basic discovery. So even if your if you can't afford a whole lot of whatever rare it happens to be, you're going to make a good 50 or 60,000 simply in cartography uh, points on the way there. Now some of these, obviously, the ones that are closest to you can't use yet. So let's look at the, at the uh, commodity market here. So here are these chimes that I purchased for 900. They're worth 16,000. Uh, so because uh, they're all the way from Tory, uh, 39 Tory. Uh, any na coffee? which I uh, just per or I can purchase right now uh, is now say there's only three available to me mm -hmm. at 1700 but the galactic average is 9000 so a uh, huge profit margin and then here's some Fujin tea which I purchased for a thousand and I can sell for a 16,000 profit per per item so you see we've got just a huge amount of money that we can make from just shipping the rare to where we got. So we got our points for our exploration. We got our points for actually getting the item this far from its its point of origin. So using those tools. Now let's talk about when we get here, aside from obviously selling these I things, let's talk about using the, the BPC tools because that's really um, the goal of this video because the more people that do it, uh, the better it's going to be for all players involved, uh, at least until the devs come up with a method for not making everybody angry. Okay, so uh, to do this, you really have to have your resolution set pretty high. Now, I, I normally have my resolution set at 1600 by, I think it's 950 uh, for my monitor. So uh, what I'm going to do is you can use the F10 key, which is the screenshot. Now, Alt F10 takes a lower resolution screenshot. You don't want to use that. You want to use the regular F10. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, F10 and take a screenshot of our, our commodities here. And then we're going to scoot down and not get the one we just got. It's okay if you get duplicates because it'll remove them automatically, but um, I'm all efficient about how many screenshots I can get here. Okay, so this was an easy one. Only got it in three screen, three screenshots. So now we bring up the Elite OCR tool. Mm -hmm. Click the plus sign. It's going to show us the three screenshots that we just grabbed. Hit open. 
and it's going to go ahead and grab the name of the system from our log file. That's one thing that uh, we actually can grab. Uh, so every time you enter a system, the commodity tool, uh, the BPC tool, which I'll show you in a moment, knows where you are. So it can kind of show you what's available for commodities, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we loaded all those. We're going to hit OCR all. It's going to go through and mark what it can uh, figure out for each each item here. So uh, it's sometimes it has difficulties with what it's seeing. So we have to, for the sake of um, everybody getting the benefit of this tool, you need to correct what's wrong. So 72946, uh, hydrogen fuel, that looks good. And this one it wasn't sure about uh, because it doesn't know about rares in the BBC um, system or tool. I'd skip these. Um, I would like to see them add that, but they just don't have it. Same with this one. Doesn't get what that one is. I skip that one. Doesn't know that one either. So um, takes a minute, but again, if you're until the devs come up with something, we really have to help each other out. This is really the best tool out there, the best tool for capturing this information. This one is taking its sweet time. Oh, wait, it threw an error. What's it say? String out of range. Oh, lovely. So let's, um, let's OCR this one. Market update completed. String out of range. Hmm. I've never seen that before. Let's try this one. Okay, agromedicines. This number is way wrong. Two six eight five five one. If you have a resolution higher, I bet this probably works better. But um, I think it's pretty good, and I don't know why it doesn't work real well. But again, shame on the devs for not giving us the ability to do this efficiently. Okay, so we've got what we can from this. We had some errors there, um, which I haven't had before, but just making sure that, and you can edit these if you need to. So if you need to go in and change, you know, if I put a D instead of an O, for instance, uh, or the station name, or you need to adjust any numbers, you can feel free to do so, and then you export it. Uh, and I just throw them all in one thing. I move them around uh, eventually. Okay, so then once this is done, we clear this table and get rid of that. Then we bring up the BPC tool. So this is the um, this is Slopey's tool. It's a great tool. Um, I wish it uh, had the availability and the demand, like the medium and the high and the low. It, it, ha it takes it, uh, but it doesn't offer it to us. So I find that somewhat frustrating. So it should, again, load automatically where you are. And then we just go and find Libby Orbital in here. Hit open, and you can see that it adds all of them into the table. And then we just save data. So this will now allow other players to be able to see the data available in this system um, as well as data us upload. to do our comparison. So if we do our current, any now, we can now pick our station, Libby Orbital. You see that somebody didn't correct their spelling, uh, so we've got two McNair rings. Uh, so it's a little bit you know, of a problem, but oh, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so where do we want to go next? If we are in any na now, where do we want to go back? Well, I think maybe we need to head to lave. So let's look at again at our tool here. If we're in any na, show the table. Want to go about 160 light years away. Um, Iranin. Hey, I've uh, never been there, right? Uh, so we could say we want to go to Iranin. Alright, so we're going to go to Iranin as Ben City. And we can search for any commodity. So what should we take with this? Mm -hmm. So aside from the rare, which isn't shown in this table, it shows that coffee is available. Um, and we're saying we can carry 16, which isn't true. We can 30, 32. And I don't want to limit this number up here because it might show me something amazing I could take a few of. Uh, all right, turns out to be the same thing. So if we carried 32 coffee, we'd have a 36,000 profit. Now, obviously we're going to stop somewhere along the way. If you don't have fuel scoop to refuel, you may want to plan that course ahead of time to figure out where you're going to stop and then have that trade created. Um, again, I'm not one of these 
park in every system and, and dock in every system and try and trade along the way because I'm all about getting the rare there as soon as possible so I can upgrade my ship and go back to dogfighting or whatever I want to do. It's dangerous to carry the rares around because they're worth so much. Uh, so we want to get to Iran. Now, here's another problem I have with the game. If we want to get to Iran, so I'm going to bring up the galaxy map here. Iranin is more than 160 light years, or is more than 100 light years away. So the map won't render this distance, at least not in the amount of time I've waited for it. Uh, so we've got a problem in that it, it's trying to create this, compute this cloud around my current location to get to Iranin. So this is what I do. I line this up, ish, like this, and then I just scooch forward as far as I can until it renders. Um, in a moment here, it'll render the lines. You see it's starting to render the lines. 48 light years out. We just give it some time here, and it will render another set. I kind of wish that if you selected your, your end, your target, that it would go ahead and just kind of compute the cylinder of um, possibilities around that instead of computing this cloud in every possible direction. I mean, this is not useful that they're going way off over into the side or over here. Uh, so um, hopefully they'll work on that. I know this is, again, it's the first, this game just released, so we got to give them some time to fix these little nuances that make the game a little weird. Um, so if we give this a moment here, um, it will render the next distance out. I'm kind of surprised that there aren't rares in Saul. I mean, I guess that would make sense that there aren't, because everybody and their brothers can be flying there. Wow, did you see the distance on that one? Wow. 2,000 light years away. I almost kind of want to go there. I wonder what's there. Probably nothing. Big sun, no planets. Alright, so this one's 62. So basically what I'm going to do is say that this is going to be my destination. So I'm going to fly to this. Once I arrive here, then I'll be able to get the computational cloud around this to get to Iran. And so I have to do it in hops by lining it up like that, kind of like using it like a gun sight, like this. I think is probably the best way to do it uh, until they come up with uh, a system that's able to compute that a little bit faster, a little more efficiently. So, so that's how we're going to fly from here to there. That's basically my goal. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and sell these things uh, because we're well within the the range um, where they're profitable. So I'm going to sell all of these T's. So I'm going to sell $264,000 in profit from carrying seven T's that I think I paid 900 for each. Uh, so huge, huge profitability for carrying that type of stuff around. And we'll go down to our Fujin T. So we're going to make 30000 from 31000 from the sale of those rares. Now obviously we want to buy... Um, the rares, the Enina coffee here. Now there was two before, and now there's seven. Mm -hmm. So you see that there is uh, a slow uh, increase available. And again, that's available to me and only me according to their latest patch notes, which I, again, I disagree with. Um, if, if you're going to have an open trading system, have an open trading system. Don't nerf it so that everybody has whatever. Make it, make it interesting. Uh, there's always rares available if you're willing to fly to find them. I mean, there's just so many of them, and people are finding them all the time. Some people aren't sharing them, some are. But again, that website, I think, is critical. So uh, that's really the end of the video. I wanted to cover how to uh, use the BBC tool, the, the OCR tool, and then why I think rare trading is a great way for players to start. Uh, once you have your credits, you know, I've now I've got almost 600,000 credits uh, that I can use to uh, upgrade my ship. So... I can go to the shipyard and we can see what we can buy here. They've got two different kinds of ships available. Um, a Cobra, which I'm already flying, and then uh, the Type 7, which I don't care for right now. So um, the ship I'm flying is worth... Um, what's the ship I'm flying worth? 700000 So doing rare trading like this, um, in two days' time, I've made almost a million in credits. And I started out with... Uh, the hauler. The hauler was what I used for the first day and a half, and then I upgraded to this Cobra, which I don't know actually was the best decision. Maybe I should have stayed with the hauler. Uh, I mean, the Cobra can carry more, but again, I'm not full. I wasn't full up. 
Um, I could have put more money into a bigger jump drive. Uh, so, uh, so, so I could have, or frame shift drive, so I actually could have gotten there faster uh, in less time and carried as much as I need to. So I think the hauler is really the best ship to get for doing this. Now, obviously, you want to avoid um, interdictions, and the best way to do that is if you see a, a player or, or an NPC coming up behind you, and it looks like they're going to interdict you, just emergency drop out of frameshift drive. And you're going to take a little bit of hull damage, uh, but then you can re-aim at the system you're heading to, wait for your uh, frameshift drive to come off cooldown, and then and then jump directly in hyperspace to head to that system. So by the time they drop out of warp, scan your warp trail, you're long gone. So you can avoid interdictions by doing that, but basically just watching your scanner, knowing if someone's coming up behind you, uh, that's an emergency situation. I've only had to do that, I think, twice in the last two days. I mean, otherwise, uh, you, you pretty much don't get interdicted. The interdict interdiction uh, minigame is, is fairly easy, although it's gotten a lot harder recently. I don't know if it's just me, but um, I've been interdicted twice in the last two days and had zero chance of actually it working. So it was either an amazing interdiction drive or things got a lot harder. But anyway, so that's uh, Elite Dangerous Trading of Rares. I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll probably make a couple more videos if uh, people find this interesting. Until next time, take care.